All right, guys, so as I mentioned, we're going to be going through the distinct hooks within a production. So to start with, I'll play you the chorus, or what is the post-chorus instrumental, rather, um, of this section of this track in, in its entirety at first. <laughs> So, now, you might be able to only hear one or two in there on your first listen. So to start with, we're going to look at this, uh, the vocal chop that I've got down here. Um, this is quite a commonly used trick nowadays, um, taking a, an element of the vocal and, and reworking it sonically to, uh, to become a, a sort of simple part that you reuse. So this isolated on its own sounds like this. that repeats around again. Uh, so if I take some of the processing off this, and I'll be going into that a bit more later in depth as to what I've done to that. This is actually the artist's vocal chopped up um, and just pitch shifted a few times. Very simple but effective little part in the song. Next part, the next layer that we have, which is very distinctive to the whole record, um, is the guitar part here, because it, it's the one of the only parts that runs through the entirety of the record. Um, this is, while it's not um, a hook or a, a memorable part melodically, sonically this fits in as a hook. Um, very, well, it ties the whole thing together because it's your one element that glues the whole track together. So throughout the whole track, this runs no automation, nothing fancy, um, just a, a good sounding guitar part that can glue the whole thing together. So nothing too fancy about that as you can see. The next one we have is actually this bass part underneath here, um, which was when, I, when we were writing the song, this was actually the finding this part was the sort of underpinning of the whole thing. It, it helped us finish the track and get it all glued together um, and really sort of find the bounce and the groove for the whole thing. And this is definitely both a, a melodic and a sonic part that helps it come together and is used throughout the track. So this isolated is sounds like this. Very simple, uh, it's using Omnisphere over here. Um, a preset that I found, and I modified the, the arpeggiator se sequence to uh, create the rhythm for that. Um, so I, I didn't have to play in very manually, I could let the, the sequencer do the work for me. So moving on from that, so we've got our, our vocal chop the guitar part and the bass part now. There is actually one more part hidden within the drums. And this is probably the most subtle of all the parts um, because it, it doesn't shout over the top of the vocal but it helps underpin the whole groove for the record. So I isolate just the drums for the track at first and play you those. <laughs> And the part that is really gluing it all together is these claps right here. Um, these are sort of the, the fundamental groove of the whole record. And those mixed together with some claps that I actually recorded of the, the artist in the booth. She, she didn't intentionally do these. Um, these were part of the writing process, I managed to sort of capture her clapping a rhythm that kind of inspired that part, so. So 
So now if we go back to the whole chorus and I play a small snippet of that again, and then I'll, I'll solo and isolate just the, those core hook parts. And you'll see how the you can still hear the record even with just those four parts playing. Um, so the whole thing again. So, just those parts now sound like this on their own. Still very much sounds like the finished record. Um, you realise how distinctive those parts are, but also none of them get in the way of each other. Um, I think that's really important because it, sometimes you can get one idea and you think, oh, I'll just use this and use this and try every variation on top of each other, but that tends to lead to very messy, messy sounding productions. Uh, now, if I do the opposite here and take out those four parts and play the chorus instrumental, you realise how much of the distinct sonic sort of quality of the record has disappeared. So what we have there is something that doesn't really sound that distinctive or that unique, um, but they all serve a purpose and there's plenty of space left in the mix for those parts to be placed in there and serve their function. So to put that into context, here's the, the whole thing again with those parts back in. And that's how they function in the chorus of the song. So these key parts and hooks, um, once you've got them for your main sections of the song that they're used for, they're very crucial, it's, uh, it is very crucial rather, to um, try and find ways to use those in other sections. Maybe not all at once, they don't have to play through your whole record, um, but they help glue sections together. So for example, in the, the middle eight of this song, where the, uh, the whole groove of the record changes, the drum pattern changes, the melodies change. Um, I've used these again just to sort of underpin the thing. So I'll play you a, a chunk of the middle eight coming out of the, uh, the second chorus of the song, just so you can hear the, the transition. So drums have completely changed, it's a different feel, it's a lot more of a half-time kind of feel. Now the first thing we've got here is this bass part that we talked about earlier keeps going here. Um, but what I've got here is I've automated uh, the EQ here, I'm just using Pro Tools stock EQ but you can do this with, with any EQ or filter that you like. Um, I just did this because I like the the uh, 12 dB proactive setting on this. Um, so I'm using this bass part to run through, but it's I'm rolling off all the high end to filter down the part. So it's still there, and it'll techniques like these trick the listener into, um, or it convinces the listener that not everything has changed. It allows you to develop a song, but still underpin things. Um, with some of the sonics or the rhythms that are there earlier. So this part on its own coming out of the chorus sounds like this. So you see the EQ jumps down there as it's automated here. And then throughout this section you can see it, it slowly filters back up into the next section of the song. So that helps the listener sort of, it becomes coherent throughout the whole record. Um, but it also helps, because of this rise in the EQ filter, it helps um, build some sort of tension and drama into the next section. I've actually got the, the part in the second verse of the song here without the, uh, the rise in the filter. So this, as it comes out of this first chorus, it quickly filters down, just to help bring you back to the next section, and then sits underneath with, uh, I think it's rolled back all the way down to about 600 hertz. Enough. <laughs> and on its own, it's still 
pretty loud and, and pretty distinctive, but if I, if I play the whole thing transitioning into that verse. <laughs> very soft and supple and just helps keep things going. That mixed with these um, these two layers of drums up here. This sort of rolling tom pattern. Um, again, that helps enhance this, as I, as I mentioned earlier. These parts, you should try to always enhance these parts with the other elements of your production. Um, if I had something else, something fairly bright going on or uh, something with a completely different rhythm and groove, I don't think this bass part would quite work as well. Um, these complement each other very, very nicely and create this sort of low rumbling or um, rolling sound underneath everything. So you see how that creates this sort of driving effect and helps keep the uh, the record moving. Um, the guitar part, as I mentioned earlier, that stays throughout the whole record. Um, it's here right in the intro. The only section is here, but we'll come to this, this section later because this is a bit of a special part of the song. Um, but otherwise, slightly different chord sequence, but stays there. Um, the vocal chop is not really used in the verse of the song, but it is um, down here. There we go. So down here we have the vocal chop. Um, so the vocal chop in this uh, in this next part of the song, in the verses and in the middle eight, isn't used in its entirety again. But what I've actually got here is I've um, taken the audio file. You can see I've, I've chopped it up and used some little parts of it here. Um, and if I, if I isolate just this part without any of the processing on it, it's the exact same part actually printed with the, all the effects on from this, uh, this bus up here. But then it's actually put down an octave through this wonderful little gadget um, with the mix all the way up. So you, you get none of that higher frequencies, uh, high register rather, um, and put back through some heavier uh, delays, uh, reverbs, and then through the, um, the effect rack, emulating um, the famous Space Echo hardware, um, just to give it a really sort of atmospheric quality. And that sounds like this. Now you'll notice I've only used these a couple of times, uh, it's at the end of every four bars. This both, it slots into gaps in the vocal melody, um, but also it just, it just helps sort of remind the listener as the record's going along of the hooks beforehand. Very subtle but They're just little calling cards that help you hark back to, to the previous sections of the song. Um, the no claps in this section, um, just because the claps would be far too bright um, against the other the other elements of the track. Really, there the guitar is the sort of king and the the brightest part above anything else, and the bass part is just helping keep things things rolling on. Um, staying on the uh, the subject of the vocal chop, I've done a similar thing on the middle eight, but I'm using it more regularly just to help build the uh, the dynamics of the song. I'm not yet so using it in its entire, um, in, in the way it was used in the first place. It's just little parts of it just to, to signal next sections. So there it's used as a little answer just to get into the, the middle eight of the song. And it's used pretty much every two bars just to, to keep things going. Um, now one, one trick I have done here is at the end of the song, um, the very last sort of post-chorus section, um, I've used the pitch down version in conjunction with the the original high pitch sort of dolphin uh, whistly kind of sound, um, 
just to really help bolster it because that is pretty much one of the, the real main hooks of the song um, and we'll, we'll come back to that later and how, how that sound was made um, but adding in this lower layer here just really subtly helps boost it for the last chorus and uh, show how important that part is Cause I 